On tonight's episode of Obscured Reality, join us as we hop into our spaceship and blast off to outer space and travel to the outermost reaches of our solar system in search of Planet X. Let's take a look at this planet and see if it's possible that we could have a ninth planet. Let's look at the facts and see why it's believed that there is possibly a ninth planet named Planet X. Sit down, sit back, relax, and join us on our journey through obscured reality. Welcome to another episode of Obscured Reality. Join your hosts, Mark and Stephanie, as they take you through a journey of the extraordinary, bizarre, and often frightening world of the unknown. Explore topics of the paranormal, UFOs, alien abduction, lost civilizations, mythical monsters, and other unexplained mysteries. Come along with us as we transcend into another dimension of obscured reality. Welcome back to Obscured Reality, all you crazies. I'm your host, Mark, and your co-host, Stevie, again. How's it going? Good. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. I'm good. It's nice. I can wear short sleeve and not be uh, freezing, which is nice. (laughs) (laughs) We have uh, finally hit that as well here. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice. I I like the rain, but uh, we're having some some work done and the rain has been, let's just say, distracting. Yeah. But the rain was well needed. (laughs) Oh, yeah. To say the least. Yeah. Big time. All right. We got a short story for you tonight. Um, oh, boy. Do you know a lot about our solar system? Or are you just familiar? I, okay. <clears throat> so the first <laughs> book I ever read as a child was the solar system. Like, so I've okay. kind of been in love with, like, the idea of outer space since a child. So is that I the would first I, and last? Yes. <laughs> book of course yes now with yes. internet you can read all you want and not call it a book hey, look so. i was still born in the <laughs> 80s i remember an age before the internet all right so let's just i remember an age when pluto was a planet ah for yeah. real and then it wasn't and then it, yeah. wasn't, then it wasn't right you think yeah. there's any planets beyond pluto in our that are technically part of our solar system I mean, yeah, I feel like there could be. Um, I mean, life isn't bound to life as we know it on this planet. Life could be of other organisms and structures on other planets. So it, well, I don't not, think not that, life, but an, oh, not life, well, but other planet, planets. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that, but <laughs> yeah. I just like I know of like other like life bearing planets that they claim to have found, and uh, and it's like yo. People are like, oh, there's no life on it. It's like, well, just because it doesn't have like, you know, two legs and a face like ours doesn't mean it's not life. Well, right. Yeah. I'm, yeah I mean, I'm sure that, there's. For other planets, yes. Um, but I feel like there's obviously more out in the galaxy. Like, yes, there's probably some more in our solar system that we just haven't found yet. But yeah. And what about yes, all the, the other the galaxies? Yeah. What about all the other gazillion galaxies, too? I mean, mm, I'm absolutely. sure there's life very similar to us out there somewhere as well you never know i I, I wouldn't doubt it you never know Um, but uh yeah well i mean according to astronomers and and researchers they believe there may be may be another planet beyond pluto i believe they call this planet nine planet Planet nine planet x that's it would i know it's planet x yeah i know it is planet x yeah planet x it would be planet nine um, researchers have nicknamed it Planet Nine. Um, Planet X wouldn't be the name, neither would Planet Nine. But uh, if they actually discover it to be true, then the uh, naming rights go to the person who discovers it. And of course, uh, the, the naming guidelines, I'm sure, are somewhat strict. They they have to fall. There is an agency over that that will say, "Here's the rules on that." you know, basically approve the name or not pick something else type deal. But mm-hmm. yeah, they believe there may be a Planet X. So tonight's all about Planet X. Very short show awesome. though. Yeah. Um, kind of interesting. Um, 
there's some other stuff out there, uh, you know, we'll get into in another show about possibly being a binary star system. And I'm not talking about they believe we used to be a binary star system. What I'm referring to is people believing we are still currently in a binary star system like the other one did not die. Um, That's another show, but, you know, kind of goes in line with some of this. But, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Caltech. We've all heard of Caltech. Bob Lazar has. (laughs) Who knows if he went there, but... Caltech researchers have found mathematical evidence suggesting that there may be a planet X or a ninth planet deep in the solar system. Uh, deep scares me. It makes me wonder how, wh- what, what needs to be there for it to be considered part of our solar system. My guess is it's going to have to be orbiting our sun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How many solar systems are in the Milky Way itself, though? I thought the Milky Way itself was a solar system. Uh, Well, I mean, we we have our star, right? Mm. And planets around our star, there's a solar system. Uh, I mean, the Milky Way is a galaxy. True. So so this hypothetical planet uh, is about Neptune-sized planet. And orbits our sun. Uh, there we go. In a highly elongated orbit, which is far beyond Pluto. Keep in mind, hypothetical. Mm-hmm. So some of the words you hear in here, are, mm-hmm. um, um, orbits our sun. That's speaking in a hypothetical manner, of course. <clears throat> um, so the object, which the researchers have named Planet Nine, could have a mass about 10 times that of Earth and orbit about 20 times farther from the sun on average than Neptune. So about 20 times farther away than Neptune. (laughs) Does it say like what type of um, shape the orbit is? Like, is it a oval? Is it round? Is it like super oval and like oblong from it or like, no. Is it bring it in, fling it, and throw it back out for it to be gone for a long time, or is it like a consistent like I stay this far away? Like, that's yeah, very I don't think, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is hypothetical, so we'll get into a very, very, okay, so very little bit hypothetical. Orbit. Yeah, we'll yeah. get into a very little bit of what you said, um, mm. but but not much of it because um, they don't know. They believe. And they believe for a certain reason, which, you know, you'll see here. Mm. Um, So about 20 times farther from the sun on average than Neptune. They say on average because they would, you know, that would assume it's probably not a perfect circular orbit, right? Mm. Um, They believe it may take between 10,000 and 20,000 Earth years to make one full orbit around the sun. Wow. That's how far away that is. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, wow. that makes me curious. Okay. Well, I wonder I wonder how long it takes Neptune to orbit the sun. <laughs> oh, Google folks. <laughs> you know how that goes. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, too, while she's looking that up. I should have looked it up, but I didn't question it. 165 yeah. years is one Neptune year. Wow. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. I'd hate to live there. You know, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'd be young, but. I'd look old as hell. <laughs> mm, how about- wow, 165. Wow, Uranus itself, uh, its closest neighbor, is only 84 years. That's a massive jump yeah. between Uranus and Neptune. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the next planet to us, Mars? I mean, uh, what's, what? From Uran- Uranus? Well, or it would well be going out from us. What's the next planet out from us, away from Mars. the sun? What's the orbit on Mars? 687 <clears throat> days, so just under two years. Hmm. Wow, yeah, it's a big jump. But, you know, you have different distances and different sizes, different masses and all that, so you have different effects mm. on the planets from the gravity mm-hmm. and Different all that. orbits because of that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so so they believe 10 to 20,000 Earth years to, for a full orbit. Um, the existence of this distant world is obviously only theater- theoretical at this point and no direct observation has been made um the math the mathematical prediction of a planet could explain 
and this will get very minor into what you had asked, um, mm-hmm. could explain the unique orbits of some smaller objects in the Kuiper Belt, a distant region, in case you don't know, of icy debris that extends far beyond the orbit of Neptune. Astrom- astronomers are now searching for the predicted planet. So, <clears throat> in essence, um, there's five objects in particular. I don't know what they are, but that have some unique orbits. And basically, they believe that there is something out there that is um, influencing that, that's causing that to happen, rather than any effects from planets, I- any of the other effects from planets that we do know of, right? As mm-hmm. well as the sun. They believe from these distinct features that something else out there is affecting these particular objects, causing them to have unique orbits. Um, <clears throat> that is why they are believing that there may be, and and they're very clear. We think there may be, you know, we're not saying right. there probably is. We yes. just don't know, but, but we have There's strong the potential possibility. Yeah. And they have strong yeah. evidence okay. to believe that there's a good chance, you know, mm-hmm. um, so astronomers are studying the Kuiper Belt. Um, they have noticed some of the dwarf planets and other small icy objects tend to follow orbits that cluster together. By analyzing those orbits, the Caltech team predicted the possibility that a large, previously undiscovered planet may be, hard, may be hiding far beyond Pluto. So they estimate the gravity of this potential planet might explain the unusual orbits, those Kuiper Belt objects. Mm-hmm. So that's hmm. basically it. That's the show. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, okay. there's, a, there's a lot of other, you know, information in their numbers and things like that, stuff that we're not going to astronomical mm-hmm. units and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Stuff that doesn't really um, <clears throat> may matter to some people, but for most probably doesn't. Um, the point right. is, they have evidence to believe there's, there may be uh, something else out there. So I, mean, I yeah, okay, I yeah. can believe that. And <clears throat> you know, just to expand on that a little bit, uh, there is a theory in which like the moon and Earth were created because if like you do a chemical compound makeup of like things that you find on uh, the moon, it matches <clears throat> some of the chemical compounds that we have here. Uh, right. A new theory as to how this was all made was that like in the beginning stages of our solar system, two planets collided together and like they were hot. They were like not solid and they kind of just like fused together. But, but the way they hit was more like this. So pieces uh, like went flying off and like compiled into what is now the moon, but was still light enough to be held in by the gravitational spin <clears throat> of the smashed planets. So right. what's to say that there weren't other planets that like in the way that they collided and were so new, they may have melded together, created this ultra heavy, large planet. And the sun was just like, whoop and threw that fucker out of here. Yeah. You know, the, the, there's <clears throat> so many different chemical compound makeups of just our, current like inner solar system not even including like Uranus, Uranus and let's say Pluto even for that matter but uh, <laughs> Neptune like, no just no the, no we're only talking the about chemical, real planets guys real planets sorry <laughs> sorry back in the 80s you know but yeah. uh, what's like we just have such a variety and beautiful array of different planets having different <clears throat> compound makeups and like just different atmospheres and everything about <clears throat> them like Venus is super heavy you know we're covered in water. Jupiter is was at one point thought all gas. It's mainly gas, but there's right. so much going on down there, especially in just the eye itself, the storm. Like, what's to say that the chemical compound of these two smashing together wouldn't create an ultra heavy, you know, odd <clears throat> uh right orbit based on the way it hit and where it was in location to the sun? They're like, we yeah. don't know. But I completely understand where they're coming from about that. Just yeah. from things that I've read and new theories of how the universe was created or like how at least our solar system was created for that matter. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, you never know. I, I mean, I, one of, one of the things that comes to my mind and, and I'm sure this, uh, they have an explanation as to why this would not be mm-hmm. plausible, but <clears throat> you know, I mentioned, uh, the possibility that we are currently in a binary star system or mm-hmm. more so they actually do believe we were most likely once part of a binary star system. Mm-hmm. The other star probably died out. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, uh, it sounds like the majority of um, solar systems are binary solar systems. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the chance that this is the um, leftover of that? You know, if yeah. that was once, of course, Absolutely. you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, stars are huge, though, as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. who knows, once you break down, get rid of all the gas and all that lava looking fire stuff coming off the the stars and stuff you know um, yeah what the real size of anything mm. really tangible is mm-hmm. but you know makes you wonder wonder if it could be a leftover uh you know the the, the remnants of a star um yeah they, stars they, stars are very unpredictable things like well yeah. we've seen <clears throat> we've seen stars implode and become black holes we've seen them become supernovas we've seen like, like stars literally yeah. die out like from hundreds of thousands of light years ago it, it's stars are incredible little things so you never yeah. you never know yeah i was just reading the other day they've been looking at uh for a while beetlejuice the the star <laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> um, i I guess it's a very clear one to see out there and because mm-hmm. uh, of the color and they've been noticing some really interesting changes in that. Mm-hmm. And it, they very firmly believe it's dying and gonna, it's going to go <laughs> really soon. Now, I mean, mm-hmm. really soon could be, you know, thousand I mean, light years or years well, for us, could, but could, yeah, could be a hundred, could be a hundred thousand years, you know, who true, knows? True, true, true. But they, I, I believe they're saying, uh, the approximate age of that was, I think 10 million years, whereas our oh, star wow. is okay. about four or 5 million. And mm. for the type of star, they're saying basically it's at the end of its life. And then with the characteristics they're seeing, um, is helping them determine that <clears throat> they firmly believe it's at the end so yeah you never know it'd be interesting to see well what's left over from that you know like i, I don't know too much about this stuff, scattered guys, sorry. elements but um yeah does it just yeah. explode does it implode um is there any uh real real large mass left after that you know <clears throat> right um just just based on some of the things that i've heard uh, through a couple of TED Talks from uh, Michio Kaku and also... Um, I like that guy. I do too. <laughs> uh, and I am spacing on this gentleman's name. Um, Neil No more than Tyson. me. There we go. Neil deGrasse oh, Tyson. Jesus. Yes. How do you so forget like, his name? That guy's I awesome. I am super I love, spacey. I love the way he is able to explain things so the me's of the world can understand them. Yes. He's our, (laughs) our generation's Carl Sagan, but from just the things that I've heard him say, like with just what the current theory of the big bang theory of like how things imploded, exploded and how chemicals combined through the heat of of like Mm -hmm. the explosions and stuff like, I'm assuming that's what would happen when a star dies is that it implodes on itself and there's like all these beautiful chemical reactions and then it just shoots those bits of life out to potentially start something else somewhere. Like yeah. that's what I'm gathering from what I've heard. But I mean, we're literally made of stardust. So you never know. Yeah. And that, that makes sense. I mean, I've thought about mm-hmm. that as well. Like, you know, <clears throat> how do you, how do planets come to be? How does life on planets come to be? And, it, you know, it's just tons Millions of things of years mixed together. Of chemical yeah. smashing. Yeah. Unintentional yeah, so, cerns. <laughs> right. So, so who knows? Yeah. I mean, who's to say shit's not going to blow out from Beetlejuice and eventually, mm-hmm. um, you know, in billions a small of years piece create. of that. Yeah. yeah. A small piece of that comes this way mm-hmm. and hits our solar system and maybe, um, mm-hmm. let's say collides with Jupiter, right? Um, maybe something the size of God. I don't know how big's Jupiter compared to Earth. It's way bigger. Oh, a, a yeah. lot, a lot. Okay, you so can let's fit say a lot of Earths in Jupiter. Yeah, let's say something the size of like, uh, God, I don't know, square mile, right? Like Jupiter can handle that without mm-hmm. without destroying it. Um, let's say something like that slams in there and just from 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 Beetlejuice and um, 
you know, who knows what elements are now in that and formed from that and all that. And boom, that could just number one, change the whole weather sphere that's going Mm -hmm. on within Jupiter. um, Mm -hmm. As well as there's between one to a thousand different things in that, that hits it, that Mm -hmm. could have the potential to help spark life in some type of fashion you know yeah absolutely like, that's uh-huh. the thing though like this is it's still i guess watching what happens to beetlejuice could hopefully like i don't think it's going to obviously happen anytime soon but if it did it would probably provide a lot of answers yeah. um that could help lead the way to a more definitive like creation of what we known as what we know as the known universe today right. um but at the same time, we are mere humans, and there's probably some things that we just aren't supposed to know. You know, uh, I've thought about this for a long time, and and like you said, not supposed to know. That would possibly indicate intelligent design, right? Like we were purposely made, purposely placed here, something like that. Mm, I don't. Well, no, I just don't otherwise, think how that, would like, you be supposed to be versus not supposed to know? I just you know. think uh, true, but I guess I meant it in a way that, like, as humans, like we are, we are still very simple-minded creatures. Um, yeah, and and the creation of the universe and everything that we even have, we, we have, have an idea of that now. To. Yeah, exactly. So, like, so, maybe there's just some things, like, unless like <clears throat> aliens come down and give us the knowledge right. of the universe, like, <laughs> well, I just don't see us answering this. Yeah, here, here's here's kind of, I'm not going to say what I think, but just kind of mm-hmm. more a theory, you know, something I thought about for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever look at the way atoms and protons and neutrons and all these things move and spin around and you look at like these, um, oh boy, Jesus, what's the word I'm looking for? You See, know, these... I'm not the only one who's losing my words <laughs> yeah. tonight. I had the, this problem um, last time too. <laughs> You know, when an artist creates something based off a description, like they create an image, they create the picture, rendition, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, and you look down at the atomical level and you see protons, neutrons, photons, all this all this crap mm-hmm. just woo, woo, spinning around each other. The first thing that comes to my mind is, my God, that looks like a solar system. There's the star and there's all the other things going around. Now, oh, wow. you yeah, look the inside your body. And the pro- yeah. You look inside your body at everything that makes it up. And it's all the same shit doing the same shit yeah. just like that. Then you look at our solar system like and it. it's the same thing doing that. Then you look at the galaxy. It's the same thing doing that. And you look at all the galaxies out there. They're all moving. That's beautiful. So, <clears throat> one That's of the beautiful, things, man. <laughs> one of the things I've thought about that, you know, I've talked about with Mike before. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just an idea like, I wonder, what if, and now this goes back to your comment, maybe there's things we're just not supposed to know. I would maybe rephrase that into Mm. maybe there's just something going on that is just so big, we can't see it. That's right. So, so, so think of, you know, I mean, you guys have heard this explanation a ton of times. Think of something like an ant. If we walk and stand right in front of an ant, an ant doesn't see us as a human. They don't even see our shoe, probably. Well, I mean, they crawl up it. They crawl up our whole body. So maybe it's a shitty example. But you know, you you have something the size of an ant, or even smaller. And then you have a human standing there. They don't know you're human. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know that you're this life that can just boom, squat them in a second. Yep. They they don't they know nothing. They can't comprehend you. The larger picture. They, yeah. Yeah. They just can't do it. Not because they're not smart enough. They, you're you're just huge. They're so tiny mm. compared to you, right? Mm. So <clears throat> I see these things moving around at the you know atomical atomic level, molecular level, all that stuff, and it's all doing the same type of stuff. And then you look at our solar systems and all that. What if we're nothing more than some type of um, think of like a blood cell, right? Think of a bunch of blood cells moving around through your veins and your arteries. Think about space and how our galaxy is just moving through space and everything within the galaxy is doing its own thing. Then you have all the other galaxies and they go. You have white cells and red blood cells. You have different types of stars. That. You have dying stars and living that. stars and all this shit. So yeah. it's like, well, 
<clears throat> if you think about it on that level, then right there, if that were something that is even a remote possibility and true, mm. we will never, uh, like we could live to be, humanity could stick around for millennia after millennia after millennia and just get smarter and smarter and smarter. We'd probably still never be able to realize that we're just an internal piece of this thing. Like we could just be circulating around in the big toe of a giant, you know, that's bigger than all these galaxies combined. We'd never mm -hmm. know, you know, think of all the galaxies yeah. as a blood cell, red blood cell, just flowing around. You know, Some beautiful blood cells like the Andromeda. Uh, oh, beautiful. oh, by the way, just so you know, to go back to that whole April Fool's is over. Don't don't play a joke. Oh no 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 no. Um, one thousand three hundred Earths can fit into Jupiter. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think it was that many. I was grossly. Now, how many uh, Earths can fit wrong. into the Sun? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's going to be a much larger number, I think. Like a hundred times that, if not more. <laughs> one, I'm not even kidding. 1.3 million. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Huge. Yeah, that's... I mean, think about it. Wow. Think about it. Yeah. Planets, what, Mars is much closer to us than the sun, mm -hmm. right? Right. And what do you see Mars as? Just a, a dot. dim light out there. Yeah. And you think, well, the sun's farther and the sun looks like, boom, that. Mm -hmm. How freaking big is that? I mean, you know, that's massive. Pretty freaking but, big, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's solar storms mm. affect our like electronics on Earth. Oh that's, yeah, yeah. That says something. Like, if a solar storm on, you know, that's taking just a not even a fraction of the you know surface of the sun can affect our little Earth. Like that. That's a that's a very big star, my friend. Yeah, well, I'd question how much it's affecting the Earth rather than affecting human-made There are objects, um, devices. <laughs> in areas like, I believe by the poles where the ozone isn't as thick, um, sensitive like research equipment can be affected by solar storms. Of course. Not so much yeah. like cell towers or anything, but it's more like sensitive research Even here. equipment. Yeah. Yeah, even here. I mean, if it's big enough, I mean, it, I believe it's happened in the past. Uh, I got to look some of that up, but uh, I'm pretty sure I saw something once. Uh, it's happened, not necessarily on a huge scale, but yeah. So Planet X, I don't know, man. I mean, that'd be cool. My 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 thinking goes straight to Jesus. I mean, it, it, it really would be matter, right? <clears throat> <laughs> I have a story for you later. Oh, God. <laughs> You're going to love this. Oh, God. Um, my thinking goes to, not Jesus, but it goes to, and, and again, like I said, it really doesn't matter because I'll be dead by the time this would even mm -hmm. potentially happen. What happens when that thing gets closer and closer to the sun in its orbit and gets to its closest point? Like, if this thing is this far out, so far out, supposedly, they don't know where, and is affecting objects that they can clearly see these objects have some weird orbits and they believe something's affecting them. What happens when this thing comes full circle and gets to its closest point to the sun? Is that going to affect other planets? Did you say that it happened? Every, <clears throat> like they believe it to be every 10 to 20,000 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just go back and see what happened 10 or, or 20,000 years ago. Yeah. But or they might not have been watching those objects, you know, obviously True. 10, 20,000 years ago. I'm pretty sure they weren't sitting there. Uh, caveman or ape have... wasn't sitting there with a telescope. <laughs> True. I mean, people believed the ancient Greeks for over a thousand years and believed that this, yeah. the Earth was the center of the universe before. That was totally proven wrong. But so, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, I'm just saying, I wonder hmm. if it could have some gravitational effect on the planets. I mean, if it's so far out and already affecting things yeah. that we can clearly see something's happening. And if it happens to be another planet out there and that's what's causing it. Jesus, I mean, that could cause some issues, if nothing else, uh, just some issues on our planet with the water, how it moves, things like that, you know? True, I mean, that's totally what I'm saying. disrupt things. That's what so, I'm saying. Like, look to see if, like, there's any <clears throat> geographical, oh, on our like, planet. yeah, gotcha. like, geographical, yeah. uh, like, 
upsets or you know distinct changes because well, like i mean our people geologists you know find rocks from millions right. of years ago well so, we supposedly have an upset in humans right isn't there a big space a big blank period of time where we just can't it's like everything just disappeared like things are gone you know there, there, there's something missing in the human genome that they're just can't figure out and mm-hmm. Um, this huge gap in history of, uh, well, I, I, I'm not going to speculate the length of time I forgot, but, um, you know, it makes you wonder, you time those events with, you know, but then again, you'd have to know not if this planet is real, but where it's believed, if it is real, mm. to be in orbit right now mm. and a potential orbit around the sun to f- try and figure that out. Yeah. But you could look back and see any interesting events that happen to be between 10 to 20,000 apart, 20,000 years apart consistently throughout history. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like geographically, Mm. nothing tends to lie. Yeah. You know, it's rocks. It it takes in the environment, but be interesting to find out. I mean, if, if it exists, freaking cool. If it doesn't exist, well, I mean, the potential yeah. of it existing was there. And, you know, we'll wait we for didn't Beetlejuice know. to explode. <laughs> 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 right, right. What's really cool, if you think about it, is like it may already be gone and we're just seeing it now. Like, yeah, that's that's intense. Like, it's already gone, but mm-hmm. it's still here to us. Yeah. 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 Space I can't wait until t- we. Uh, if we do figure out what gravity is, that would be very interesting. True. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> yeah. True. Well, yep. That's planet X guys. The yeah. ninth planet. Um, technically, I mean, well, maybe 10th planet. Clue Pluto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess to us older, <laughs> elder millennials, it's going to be the 10th planet. I don't Pluto really forever. care about Pluto. A lot of people do, Pluto you know, forever. I mean, yeah. We, hey, we grew up with it. It was a planet and there. Mm-hmm. Boom. Not a planet. Yeah, just stripped Wait a it. minute. Kicked it out. <laughs> Kicked it out of the group. Yep. Wasn't the cool kid anymore. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The little, well, the little kid that tagged along. Yep. <laughs> he tried to make it, but just wasn't fast enough. Mm-mm. Did not make varsity. <laughs> the rest, see, the rest of the team just didn't hang back with the slower guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Any uh, any final thoughts? That's going to wrap it up for Planet X here, guys. Yeah. No, I'm, no, other than to hit that bell so that you know when our new show comes out every <laughs> Friday and to every like, Friday comment and subscribe. Yes, hey, we're gonna have a guest on soon, guys. Uh, very so smart excited. person. Uh, you have never heard of him, I can guarantee you that a hundred percent. But very smart guy. Uh, I think we're gonna have an interesting topic to go over. And, oh, I'm so excited. So uh, he's excited a, he's a talker, yes. he, he's a talker, so uh. We may stray off. Um, <laughs> that's fine, though. It's always interesting. So, yeah, like, share, subscribe, like she said. And, guys, if you have any personal stories of your own, uh, UFO, UAP sightings, aliens, alien abductions, um, God, your parents are from a lost civilization and they're still alive. Uh, ghosts, paranormal, portals, anything, you know, think Skinwalker Ranch. But mm-hmm. any real things that have happened to you, whether you believe them to be real or not, um, but we're just so odd. You can't explain. Shoot them over our email, obscured R one at gmail.com type story in the subject. So we know definitively it's for that. And we will see you guys next time. Peace Bye. out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check back with us often for new episodes. Feel free to drop a comment and don't forget to like share and subscribe to obscured reality.